this video, we're going to see a demonstration of how to make a grand stain in the uh, from the gum line. And just as before, you just have to put what is the technique that you're using. So in this case, will be gram stain in the glass slide. And then your initials and the date. Should you do it there on one edge of the glass slide. So for diluting the debris and the bacteria that you have in your gum line, you have to add water to the center of the glass slide. And then you will sterilize first your loop. And then add water with your squirt bottle, which has distilled water in the center. In this case, you don't have to wait for this to cool because this is not going to affect at all. But see, you have a droplet there of water. And I think that it's more than enough. So let me show close the camera. And then you want to sterilize your loop because of course you, you don't know if you previously had bacteria in this, this loop. And then you sterilize it again and put it on one side. You don't need to use this in your mouth, of course, at all. So you put it here. And then the preferred area for grabbing bacteria from your mouth is the second superior molar because this is the area where we have more bacteria. So you will retract a little bit your, your cheek to the side, introduce your toothpick, find the gum line, the area between the tooth and the, the gum great really well and then mix it here with your your water in a circular motion and then since you have a lot of water and you want to wait for this to to dry and you have kind of a puddle there you can smear it to the sides to make a thin film that make it easier for you to to dry and at some point that helps as well to distribute the bacteria to the sides and also the debris what do you do with this after you will put it in the beaker with the disinfectant and then let it dry as any other smear and once it's dry you will heat fix and then you start the staining while this is uh, while this is drying I'm going to explain the steps of, of gram stain. So we have uh, four major reagents or steps that we do in gram stain with rinse of water in between. So you will have to add crystal violet, which is the primary dye. It's a positively, stain, uh, positively charged dye. And this one, you will add it for a minute after you have heat fixed your slide. Then you rinse with water and after that, you add iodide, Gram's iodide, which is a mordant, meaning that it's going to create crystals of uh, crystal violet. So make bold here the crystal violet. So for gram positive bacteria, the crystal violet iodide complex will stay inside. It will make it hard for the crystal violet iodide complexes for, for escaping. And then for gram negative, bacteria, you have to add safranin, which is the counter stain. Now, before that, you have to add a decolorizing agent, which is 90% ethanol, or it can be a mixture of ethanol and acetone. So what this do is going to dehydrate the cell wall and it's going to dissolve the outer membrane in gram negative bacteria. But in gram positive, it's going to seal this thick layer of peptidoglycan so that the crystal violet and iodide complexes stays in. But since the gram negative, if you have a mixture of bacteria like the ones that we have in our mouth, they have an outer membrane beside the cell wall. These bacteria 
as you add the decolorizing agent, it will basically have pores through which the crystal violet iodine complexes leave the cell and then you don't have any more color. So everything up to this step is supposed to be purple, gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Now, crystal violet you add it for a minute, rinse. Iodide for a minute, rinse. And this alcohol you add it for 10 seconds and then you rinse and finally you add your safranin which is the counter stain that is going to stain gram negative bacteria and then you rinse and then you let it air dry and then you will uh, observe under the microscope uh, the magnifications that are required. Now this last slide is almost done. Let me grab a clothes pin. And uh, I think it's ready to be fixed. So you grab the slide by one edge and then you just clamp here the clothes pin. Pass it twice quickly through the flame like this. Put it here in your rack for staining. And then start adding your reagents. So it's for one minute. Crystal violet, you try to cover the entire area where you have your smear. And then you, you don't need to over add dye into there. Whatever you dye, dye you have, you just uh, move the slide around until you see that it's covering everything. And be careful uh, to not spill it over you or over the clothes pin if, if possible. I mean, it's, it's just a precaution. <clears throat> While we wait, uh, let me explain you a little bit about the morphology of bacteria. So bacteria has a shape. Most of them, they have a shape that is specific for that bacteria. Hardly they change into another shape. So we can have cocky, which are spheres. We can have rods uh, that are called bacilli, or we can have coma shape, which are short rods. And then we can have spirals that, depending if it's thick and short, you call it a spirillum. If it's uh, long and slender, you call it you call it a spirochete. And uh, they tend to arrange in groups, at least cocky and rods. Aspirillum hardly, and spirals in general, spirochetes. They tend to form single groups. So I think it has been one minute. And then you rinse it carefully. So you, you see how I angulate the slide there. And then you rinse it until you don't see any of more remaining uh, of the purple color from the crystal violet. Okay, now you add your iodide for one minute. And similarly, you don't over dye the, or add the reagent, so you just distribute it with your motion of the slide. So, uh, Cocky, they can be single, rarely happens, but it can be, or they can form groups of two, which you call diplococcus, diplo means two. Uh, they can form tetrads, groups of four. They can form groups of eight that are called sarcinae. And some of them, they can form a long chain, which is called a streptococci, a strepto mean chain. And then they can form clusters, like if they were grapes, this is a staphylococcus. And uh, staphylo comes from the Greek word which means grapes. And then for bacilli, is the same. You can have single bacilli, you can have diplo bacilli, you can have strepto bacilli, and you don't have staphylo bacilli. That's the only difference. And then you can have, of course, gram positive bacilli, gram negative bacilli, and uh, cocky as well. Now in terms of uh, volume, of course, bacilli has more volume than a sphere. And that 
it can tell you a clue whether the bacteria can produce endospores or not. Endospores, remember, are the dormant form of bacteria. So I think a minute has passed by. So let me just check out the axis of the iodide and then angulate it to the front and the side so I don't have to add so much or well, I don't have a, uh, reagents spilling over the coat spin. And then this one is very critical, only 10 seconds, no more than that. Why? Because you cannot, well, you don't want under decolorize or over colorize your decolorize your slide. So, That's 10 seconds. So let me rinse. And then add the final reagent, which is safranin. And for a minute. So I was, oh, yeah, I was talking about the volume. So since the spheres has less volume than bacilli, and endospores occupy space in the cytoplasm of the cells, you expect to form endospores only in bacteria that has bacillus shape, because it has more space. And uh, species of bacteria that produces bacilli, uh, endospores will be bacilli, like B. cereus, Bacillus megatherium, Bacillus species seni, and then Clostridia. Clostridia, it's a series of bacteria or species of bacteria that are anaerobes, and they produce endospores. And these endospores are free up into the environment, and when they find the right environment, they will germinate and form the vegetative form. Just a minute has gone by. And see how before I add water, I just get rid of the excess of, of staining. And then go in an angle like this. And you will let it air dry like this. Now, if, if you see, you don't see so much of the dye in there and so much of the bacteria, but the bacteria is there, definitely. And then once you're done, then you will look at this under the microscope. And this is all for this video. Bye-bye.